just want to provide a short video regarding Excel and the use of Excel in finance. Um, under week A, um, there's a quite a few files here, but one of them is this one right here, FINC 632 FB and PB. Just stands for Future Value, Present Value. I've already got it open. When you open it, it looks just like this. And it's just a several um, formulas that I've kind of organized for you. Um, I'm a big believer in using Excel when it comes to finance and uh, using Excel to uh, do the heavy lifting for you when it comes to future value and present value type of calculations. And this is what this file does. And I've organized it by the type of formula. Uh, right here it says present value, future value, future value. Uh, this is ordinary annuity, ordinary annuity. Um, this is the future value of an amount. This is present value of an annuity due, future value of an annuity due, present value of an amount. And then solving for just some specific issues with time value of money. You can solve for the number of periods, solve for an interest rate, solve for a payment. You can also do what they call um, figure out what the effective annual rate of interest is. And so if you are trying to figure out the value of an annuity, uh, the value of an investment, um, how much of time it will take to accomplish something, typically you're looking at future value. Um, and the way these work, anything that's in blue is input. So whenever you see the blue, just think that's something you can just type in these, the amount that you need to solve a problem. Um, when you see the formulas down here, that's just Excel speak. That's Excel, Excel code and Excel references to calculate uh, whatever we're trying to figure out. So FB is Excel for future value. And then all the letters here, the numbers, are just the cell references above. And you can see down here in very small writing, and I can't make it any bigger than it is, is this kind of saying in Excel, this is the, you know, the rate, number of periods, payment, present value, and the type. And then um, if you put in the amounts, it just calculates the answer for you. The times negative one is only there because um, what's kind of strange about um, present value cal or future value, present value calculations, they turn out to be negative. So I just type in the times negative one just to show that it, you know, it, the answer should be positive. It just kind of makes more sense to be a positive. An annuity is just something that um, it's the same dollar amount year over year over year. And that's what the payment is um, in this example. So I'm going to receive that payment of $100 for three years and at 5%. And that's the present value of it or the future value of it. Um, in this formula, it says the zero in the formula means this is an ordinary annuity. And so you can see here um, the zero right there just means ordinary. That means that the payment happens at the end of the year, end of the time period. You also have what they call an annuity due um, down here. This is the same inputs, same exact thing, the same formula even, except for one little difference. There's a one right here. And that means annuity due. Okay. So zero right here means ordinary. One right here means due. Due means just the payment happens at time zero today, not at the end of the year. That's the difference between those. Um, so you have present value and future value of annuities. You also have present value and future value of an amount. And then down here, you can solve for specific things. Solve for the number of periods. That's the NPER formula. Solve for I. That's the rate formula. Solve for payment. That's the PMT formula. So just think of all the inputs that go in these calculations. You can solve for a specific input also. And the effective rate formula, let's just say that you're looking up a car loan. And that the, oops, I mean, that is one. Uh, let's just say you go to your local bank and you're looking to buy a, a vehicle. And let's just say they quote you 4% okay, as the rate for your new car loan. Let's say you're going to go buy a brand new vehicle, you've got great credit, and they're saying they'll give you 4%. And that's great. That's a great rate. However, uh, most likely, as, with, as it is with most car loans, they'll ask you for a monthly payment. So, okay, so I'll make a monthly payment. Well, then the number of periods now becomes 12 and your effective rate is actually 4.07. So the nominal rate is what the annual rate would be, 
but the effective rate would be 4.07. So they're supposed to tell you what the effective rate is. Uh, that's supposed to be in the documentation and the disclosures, but you might see a billboard or um, some advertisement that says we've got a 4% um, loan rate and you read the fine print, it might be 4.07 and because you're making monthly payments. That's what the effective annual rate means. And then there's going to be a little quiz um, regarding this to solve a few problems. So, you know, one would be the you know, future value of an amount. And I just have some numbers defaulted here. Um, let's just say that um, you invest $20,000 today. Let's just say you've got uh, an inheritance and you want to put that away. And so you're going to put in present value is what you have today. And you go down to um, your local broker and you ask your broker, if I put this in the stock market and I just sat on this until I retire, uh, what's the rate that I would earn on this? So maybe you're going to put that 20000 into some broad mutual fund, uh, maybe a mutual fund that will match the uh, market returns. Let's just say it's the uh, return of the S&P 500, a major stock market index. And let's just say, you know, on average, the stock market, and this is over very many years, 75 years, the average is right around 8%. So let's just say the broker says, you should you know, expect to get 8%. Now, obviously, we all know there's good years and bad years in the market. And this past year has been so-so, but we had some really good years right before this past year. And so let's just say then um, we're 40 and we think that in 25 years we'll retire. That's my number. Okay. So basically my goal with the broker would be if I put in the 20,000 and uh, I put this into a, a, a mutual fund that gives me the return of the market and we expect that to be 8% and I'm 40 today and I expect to retire um, at age 65. Well, what will my fund be worth if I do nothing else? I just park the 20000 let it grow for 25 years. It'll be worth 136969.5. Okay, so that's that's kind of what this type of a problem will do for us. Um, let's just say I had another example where um, I'm going to put that 20000 into a bond. Okay, so let's just say I'm going to put that into a bond. And I want to figure out what that bond will be worth um, in 25 years. So let's just say I've got that 20000 I'm going to buy a bond. And let's just say this bond will pay me um, interest um, that I should expect interest. Let's just say it might be like, uh, oh, let's see. And the average interest rate would be probably be 3%. So let's just say uh, we think this bond... I'll take 20,000 times 0.03. That earns $600 a year worth of interest. Okay. And let's just say the market rate of interest, the amount of interest I'd expect you know, on the market today, let's just say it's 4%. And again, let's just say I'm buying a bond that will mature when I retire when I'm 25. So I'll put in 25 years. And the question, what's that worth? Now that is all a whole bunch of pound signs. It's because my column isn't wide enough. So I just widen my column. My answer would be um, actually it'd be 7830427. So if I bought a bond, so I buy it for twenty thousand today, and then I receive six hundred dollars worth of interest per year for twenty five years, and let's just say I expect to earn four percent on that bond as it matures, it'll be worth seventy eight three or four twenty seven. Okay, so that's it's another example. Uh, future value, present value. Let's just say um, another one would be um, I could take this one backwards and go if the future value is 136,969.5 and we know that the interest rate was 8 and it's 25 years, I should get my 20,000 and I do. Say the 20,000 in there, so I just did that one backwards. Um, another one I could do would be Let's just say um, I want to solve for the number of periods. And I'm trying to figure out how long it'll take for an amount to double. So let's just say my present value today is 1. And my future value is 2. And I'm going to earn 8%. And I want to double that. Well, 8%, it would take just over 9 years. 
Okay, and you know, it doesn't really matter what numbers I use. It could be two and four. I'm going to get the same answer. That's an example of one we can do. Um, with these ones down here, one number has to be negative and one has to be positive for that to work. It doesn't matter which one's negative, which one's positive, but that's all you need to know for those to work. Where I can solve for an interest rate, um, I can say um, if I want to have $2,000 five years from now, and I've got $1,000 today, um, what interest rate do I need to earn for that to double? It base. So that's 14.8. So, you know, with that, be one way to look at that one too. So, there's lots of examples for how these will work. And as we do some of our assignments throughout the class, you'll see those. Um, there's going to be a little quiz. It's it's not for points. It's just kind of for fun um, based on this form, this file. But just open this file up and just know we'll be using this throughout the, the class. And when I'm in Omaha, going over a few things with everybody, the three different weekends. Uh, we'll be using this file one of those times also. So we'll we'll pull it up in class and I'll show it to everybody also. Um, if, as always, if you have questions about anything, just let me know. Thanks.